So I think I'm just going to straight up start the review like this. The Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra is absolutely batch mental off its rocker and I think I kind of love it a bit. You'll certainly struggle to find a smartphone that's quite so unapologetically flamboyant in 2021 beyond the usual foldy bendy efforts. The Mi 11 Ultra is an absolute brick though that packs in some extravagant tech like a teeny second screen and a telephoto lens with 120 times zoom action. It's a huge chunky hefty slab of a smartphone and bloody pricey to boot so I really shouldn't like it quite as much as I do but there are plenty of caveats thrown in there as well. Now, I've been using the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra as my full-time smartphone for about a week now and here is my in-depth review and for more on the latest great tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So one of the first things about this Xiaomi blower that's likely to put a lot of people off is that brick-like design. At 234 grams, the Mi 11 Ultra is one of the heaviest handsets around, while the near 7-inch stature means you won't be squeezing it into your skinny jeans. You'd probably have more luck trying to wrestle an oily bear with both hands tied behind your back. Now that Jutton camera lens has obviously been the subject of serious scrutiny over the past few weeks, and rightly so. It does kind of poke out there like some enormous rectangular codpiece just screaming for attention. Personally, I've got to say, it didn't really bother me too much, and it did actually come in quite handy whenever I tried to use the Mi 11 Ultra one-handed. You can just kind of rest your finger there like some sort of mini shelf, and it helps with the maneuverability. And while the Mi 11 Ultra is certainly as big as a tank, it is also just as tough as one. You've got a ceramic arse around the back end and some Gorilla Glass Vic action up front so this thing can survive drops, bumps, scrapes and even frenzied attacks. Plus it's IP68 water and dust resistant to boot so on the Jason Statham scale this is a perfect five bold beefcake bastard out of five. Have it! Now the software experience here is the usual MIUI 12 slathered on top of Android 11 and I feel like I've absolutely talked to death about MIUI in general recently and like all of its advantages and its drawbacks. I've even done a full-on dedicated MIUI 12 video so go check that out for all you need to know about the best features thrown on here. I'll try and remember to put a link somewhere up there although frankly my brains are closely resembling deep fried jelly right now so apologies if that just doesn't appear. But as a brief sort of in a nutshell effort, MIUI 12 here on the Mi 11 Ultra runs beautifully helped along by the beefy specs. Uh, it was a pleasantly bug free experience as well and I still love some of the bonus features such as that rather cheeky control center that's chucked in there. Unfortunately you do get the usual collection of crapware pre-installed on here, a bit of Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, all that shenanigans. Thankfully that can be quickly and easily deleted though and you do get 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage packed into this mama jamma but Sadly, no micro SD memory card supports. So you can't expand it, which is a bit of a bummer. Do people still say a bit of a bummer in 2021? I mean, it sucks donkey slummy, basically. Now, one of the first things about the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, which I absolutely ruddy loved, was that 6.81 inch AMOLED screen, which is as close to perfection as you could possibly hope for. This mighty panel is every movie fan's wet dream, blasting super sharp Quad HD plus visuals right at your peepers, complete with Dolby Vision and HDR10 plus support for beautiful contrast. Colour reproduction can be lifelike or gut-punchingly vivid or anything in between really, while those brightness levels go all the way up to melt your face off Raiders of the Lost Ark style. The adaptive refresh rate drops all the way down to 30Hz when there's not really much going on to preserve battery life, otherwise it can boost all the way up to 120Hz for a really nice silky smooth experience. Those stereo speakers both sound tuning from Armand Cordon and they certainly spaff out some meaty sound for a pair of smartphone blasters. It's definitely great for enjoying some classic shows on Disney Plus or whatever. Now the Bluetooth 5.2 wireless connectivity works perfectly here on the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra when you're kicking back with some music. Enjoyed some great quality sound on my Sony headphones thanks to the LDAC support and a strong range on this thing as well. I could quite happily leave the phone downstairs and bugger off upstairs with no juddering performance or anything like that. And that's just as well really because there's absolutely bugger all headphone jack action here on the Mi 11 Ultra. Yaw boobs, sucks to you. One of the more distinctive features here is of course that 1.1 inch AMOLED screen around the arse end which is sharp and punchy just like the main display. Now Xiaomi builds this as an alternative always on display but the screen doesn't actually stay on full time when the phone is laying face down. It only springs to life when notifications pop up or if you double tap that screen. And the longest you can have this stay on is just 30 seconds so I'm not really sure why you'd use that instead of just the main always on display around front. The best use of this mini screen is definitely as a guide when you're taking selfies with the rear cam, though it's so small that it can only really be used as a rough guide at best. 
and if you've got not great sight then you're basically buggered. Personally I definitely preferred the full sized rear panel on the excellent Nubia Z20 which made taking photos with that rear cam much much easier. It could also be used for the likes of Skyping which meant you didn't need a selfie camera at all so you had a nice full view primary screen around front. Still definitely not going to moan when it comes to the performance of the Mi 11 Ultra because you've got Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset stuffed in there backed by 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM and oh boy the power. That Adreno 660 GPU can handle any game out there, even Genshin Impact, although you'll want to keep it off the absolute highest detail settings as the Mi 11 Ultra's three-phase cooling setup can't quite keep up with the heat generated. I definitely did see some throttle and even when I was gaming just for short bursts. Thankfully the Mi 11 Ultra doesn't get toasty enough to singe your fingers or roast your chestnuts when you slip it into your pocket, but it's definitely a warming. And on the subject of gaming, you get MIUI's usual selection of helpful gaming tools which take quite a bit of getting used to, but they serve up all the usual features. Plus the screen's 480Hz touch responsiveness means you should stand a decent chance against those legions of cocky school kids in games like PUBG. As long as your arthritis isn't acting up and you aren't smashing back the dark and stormies all afternoon, and yes, those are both my excuses and I'm sticking to them. And if you want a game on the go, there's 5G support, as you would hope, extending to both SIM slots. And like a few other super premium smartphones from 2021, you got full Wi-Fi 6E support as well for a proper bit of future proofing. So as I've already mentioned, the Mi 11 Ultra is a completely ridiculous beast, packing in some serious tech, including of course two displays. So it's just as well that Xiaomi found room in that massive chassis for a 5,000 milliamp battery. And I found that that was good enough to keep the Mi 11 Ultra chugging along on a, just a single charge through some fairly intense days. Although I've got to say, I absolutely scraped it on a couple of those longer days with just two or three percent left in the bowel at the end of the day. Admittedly though that is with lots of camera play, using the phone as a sat nav, lots of media streaming, all of that good stuff. But if you do find yourself running low you forget to charge it overnight, something like that. No worries, you've got 67 watt wires charging so with a strong enough adapter this will power up in a jiffy. And you've also got 67 watt wireless charging as well and of course there are very few wireless chargers that can actually go up to that sort of power but if you've got one then banana armor. And last up Xiaomi also made sure to supercharge the camera tech of the Mi 11 Ultra with all kinds of crazy features and abilities and just going off how much those lenses poke from the surface you'd be right for expecting something special. Well that 50 megapixel primary sensor with built-in optical image stabilization sure can churn out crisp detail packed pics with accurate colors as long as you don't rely on that AI mode which can add a rich glaze to your pics for a poppy but artificial finish. However I did notice some issues with my test shots. HDR situations can result in some washed out photos even when conditions aren't particularly taxing. And moving subjects also resulted in a blurry pic which was particularly surprising. And while the majority of my portrait shots looked great with accurate separation and a slick bokeh style finish, I also saw a couple of bizarre ghosting issues in some of my shots. And gotta say I'm kind of hoping and expecting in fact that those are just a couple of early bugs that Xiaomi is going to squash sooner rather than later. Because the camera is definitely capable apart from that and even photos taken in very low light tend to come out well, a little brighter than what you'd see with the naked eye and still packed with detail and reasonably accurate tones when you use that night mode. Xiaomi's 48 megapixel ultra wide angle lens suffers from the usual foibles like unnatural colour capture and occasionally distracting distortion, definitely not as impressive as some rivals like the Oppo Find X3 Pro or the OnePlus 9 Pro. And if you're into really up close shots of teeny things then this lens can also be used for your macro snaps, yippee hooray. More tantalising is the 48 megapixel telephoto shooter with built in OIS again which pumps out sharp looking close ups at the 5 times optical zoom level and 10 times hybrid mark. Even up to 20 or 30 times you'll get a good look and pick as long as the subject isn't actually moving. Motion is once again quite problematic. Beyond that though the quality seriously dips but there's still more than enough zoom action here to suit pretty much any real life circumstances where you'll need it, apart from anything creepy of course. You've got the usual pro mode shenanigans should you want full manual control otherwise there is of course a plethora of other bonus camera modes which I'm guessing most people will just completely ignore but they're there if you want them. The Mi 11 Ultra can impressively shoot 8K video with all three main lenses, although I mostly stuck to 4K for my test video and this produced some perfectly fine footage. Image stabilization is good even when you're shooting at Ultra HD with the occasional bout of oversaturation but otherwise good picture quality. Audio pickup is clear at close range, not so good at distance, and you do have a zoom slider on the screen when you need it, with the Mi 11 Ultra automatically switching between the different lenses. And last up you've got a 20 megapixel selfie camera up front, although to be honest I more often than not just use the rear camera with that display preview instead. 
When taking snaps this way, you can push the volume down button, which starts a short countdown before shooting you with that 50 megapixel main sensor. This definitely works better for your selfies when you're shooting outdoors, capturing a more balanced result than the selfie snapper, which tends to blow out the background. But this feature only works with the main auto mode, not stuff like the portrait mode and the night mode. And that's my review of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra after using it as my full-time smartphone for around a week. And I've got to say, that second screen isn't as compelling as something like the Nubia Z20. But if you want a slightly bonkers, over-the-top, super premium smartphone, and you don't mind carting around a brick all day, yeah. So that in a nutshell is what's going on in my brain. But what about you, fine folk? It'd be great to hear your own personal thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech if you haven't already. And have yourselves a fan-bloody-tastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.